there is something that education can do for Africans. Something that education should do for Africans that it is yet to do. Which is why, despite the considerably high rates of education in Africa, there is little to show for it. I am Ace Chimbero Monzo. I'm an author, author of The Wisdom and the Power of African Unity, author of 222 Questions and Answers about African Progress. I'm the leader of One Africa Family OAF, and our vision is to lead Africans from last to first. Now, what is education? Education is the process of training an individual to be the best he or she can be, so that the individual can be able to transform his or her environment to the best of his or her ability. Unfortunately, these have not been happening in Africa to the level we expect it to happen. Because in Africa, we have enough people who are supposed to transform the African continent. Africa has more educated people than uneducated people. Africa has more than 70% of a population that are literate, and less than 30% of the African population is uneducated. This shows that Africa has more than enough people to transform the African continent. More than enough to transform the African continent from a continent of age-long slavery to a free continent. From a continent that imports to a continent that exports. From a continent that consumes to a continent that produces. From a continent that is reliant on foreign aid and help to a continent that is self-reliant, that can cater for itself a continent that takes responsibility. Unfortunately, we see all these things happening in Europe, in Asia, in America, but in Africa, we see the opposite. Let's talk about health. In the area of health in Africa, hundreds of thousands of Africans die annually from malaria, but we still have to wait for Glasgow Smith Klein in Belgium to produce the mosquito or malaria vaccine in the name of Moscris. The COVID-19 ravaging the whole world. Germany, US, China, India, and so on. They have produced their vaccines. And we in Africa, we are just waiting for them to produce for us to buy. What about measles, tetanus, polio? We still have to wait for non-Africans to produce the vaccines for these killer diseases for us to buy. What about HIV and AIDS ravaging the African continent? killing hundreds of thousands of African people annually. We are still waiting for Europeans or Americans or Asians to produce vaccines for us to be free from HIV and AIDS. Should that be so? What about in the area of politics? African leaders keep depending on foreign leaders for AIDS as though they are not their mates, as though these leaders are their masters. African leaders are still subservient to the Arabs or to the European in one way or the other. They still go to them for loans. They depend on them. They cannot stand on their own feet because they believe that they cannot stand on their own feet. African leaders keep treating African people like trash. Most African leaders treat their people as though they are not human beings. They use police force. They use military. They use everything to destroy their own people instead of using those forces to fight for them. They believe that African people are worthless. They are still servants in the eyes of world leaders and in their own eyes before world leaders. Is that how our leaders should be? Is that the kind of leadership we are supposed to be having in Africa, whereas we have only few exceptions, like Paul Gagame, the president of Rwanda, and few other African leaders who can say they are using the power that they have to serve their people? What about in the area of education? Most of those we quote in the various fields of education are non-Africans. For example, in the social sciences, we quote uh, people like Frederick Hegel, Adam Smith, Karl Marx, David Ricardo, in engineering, Alessandro Volta, Michael Faraday, Holmes, and so on. In management, we quote Peter Drucker, we quote uh, Henry Fayot, and so on. Where are the African philosophers, African educationists, trailblazers, and so on? What are they doing? How can they come out with their own policies? with their own innovations and ideas which you can start to be using in our schools. Most of the textbooks we use in Africa are outsourced. The materials, the ideas we use in Africa, most of them are outsourced from what Europeans wrote from their researches. What about in the area of invention? 
Let's talk about even publications. About 2.5 million publications were made on science and technology in the year 2018. Out of the 2.5 million, China alone produced about 528,000. US, about 422,000. But the highest in Africa, Egypt and South Africa, produced about 13,000 each. Which translates to why, according to the World Intellectual Property Organization, out of about 3.1 million patents filed globally in the year 2017, 2 million came from Asia, 644,000 came from North America, and 355,000 from Europe, and only about 16,000 from the African continent. Why would we be carrying as researchers in our institutions when we believe that the Europeans are going to produce all that we need to use in Africa? When we believe that they're going to do the innovations and we're going to be using it? What about in the area of productivity? What do we produce? We have about 3% or 5% of the world's natural resources. Yet, we produce about 2% of everything produced in the whole world annually. Should that be so? Does this not show that there's something wrong with our educational system? Now, let's even talk about education and understand education better. In education, there are three domains of education. Domains of education are areas and aspects which education must touch for education to be complete. And according to Benjamin Bloom, who was an American educationist, together with other educationists in the, in the 1950s, they were able to come up with three main domains of education. One is the cognitive, two, the affective, and three, the psychomotor. According to the, them, the cognitive focuses on the mind. It focuses on the ability of the mind to gather, understand, analyze, use, synthesize, and evaluate information, and to also create things with it. The psychomotor deals with the connection between the mind and the body. It talks about dexterity, the use of the hands, body movements, coordination, skills that have to do with body or the hand, walking, running, sports, and so on. Then, there is the affective domain, which is the connection between the mind and the heart. It deals with a person's attitude, a person's value system, a person's way of reasoning, which is attitude, value systems, and enthusiasm, motivations, and so on. This is the area where education is lagging behind in Africa. And I myself, I add the fourth dimension. There is the fourth domain, which I can call the psychic domain. Or the spiritual domain which i'm not going to talk about now the area that education is failing mostly in africa is because education is failing in the affective domain of education in africa african leaders have failed to address the affective domain of education in africa without taking into consideration that the african people have passed through hundreds of years and thousands of years of slavery colonization New colonialism, racism, and so on. And that Africa has been called the dark continent, according to Henry Morton Stanley, who was the person who helped to clear the way for the colonization of Congo on behalf of King Leopold II of Belgium. He even had to write two books that held Africa in a very bad light. One is Through the Dark Continent, which he wrote in the year 1878, and the other is in the darkest Africa, which he wrote in the year 1890. To this man, Africa is a dark continent. Africa is a continent of savages. What about Trevoropa, who was a professor of history in the University of Oxford, who said that Africa had no history, that all the history in Africa was about the entrance of the Europeans into Africa, and the rest was darkness, and that darkness was not a subject of history. There are many degradatory statements that have been made about Africans. Africans have been called black monkeys, incapable of reasoning, all sorts of things that we had low IQs and so on. All these have affected the psyche of the African man. People do not believe that anything good should and can come out from Africa. These things have damaged the IQ and damaged the psyche and every single thing about the African man. That the African man no longer believes in himself. And education in Africa failed to address this. 
the correct education system we have in Africa, the Europeans gave it to us. When the Europeans came into Africa, they refused to address the problem that Africa had in terms of slavery. Instead, they brought in colonization. They taught to read and write in their own language, instead of teaching us how to read and write in our own language. They taught us to dress like Europeans, instead of like Africans. They taught us how to build railway, to channel goods from Africa in raw materials to Europe, and how to import finished goods. They taught our leaders how to use bayonets, guns, and so on to subdue the African people instead of to use the power they had as leaders to serve the people. The Europeans taught us biology, mathematics, and so on, which are things we already knew in Africa before they came because education, as you know it, began in Africa. But the affective domain which Africa needed the most, they killed it even furthermore with colonization and new colonialism. They used all the tools in their power to subdue the African people mentally and to subdue the hearts of the African people. And education in Africa, when we took over, we refused to change all this. We refused to address this. We began to teach ourselves from where they stopped. Biology, business, we began to get certificates, master's degree, PhD. And even after all these certificates, nothing changed. Education in Africa must address the affective domain of the African people or we will remain at the level where we are. We will keep following others and not be able to lead. The most important thing that education must do for Africans is to teach the African man to believe in himself. Education must teach the African woman to believe in herself, to believe in fellow Africans, that you can be the best as an African. That is the best thing that education can do for you, to believe that as an African man, you can rule the world. As an African woman, you can rule the world. As an African man, you can head the IMF, you can head the United Nations, you can be the best, you can innovate and bring out something that no other person in the world can bring out. You don't have to wait for Europeans to do it first before you can do it. You can do what Europeans have not done. You can do what Asians have not done. You can bring out the best innovation in the world as an African. You can rule the world as an African. Education must teach the African man that he or she, that he can be the best and teach the African woman he can be the best. Through courses learned in school, through writing books that will teach this, through subjects taught in schools to our populous, our students, our African children, that they can be the best in the world. Teach the African child, teach the African people that we Africans, we are the original people in the world and life began in Africa. Even all the human beings on earth came out from Africa. That Africa is the cradle of humanity. So as also Africa, number two, is the cradle of civilization. Without Africa, the whole world would have been at the Stone Age. Without Africa, there couldn't have been any innovation in the world. The world would have been full of forests, trees, or stones, and one beings would have been probably naked, no language, without Africa. Teach them that science, engineering, architecture all began from Africa. The first engineer in the world, the first architect in the world, is an African by the name of Imhotep, who was a vizier of Rejosa, of the third dynasty of Egypt. Teach them that we Africans gave the world writing materials, the first writing materials, the reed and the papyrus. That Africans gave the world stone buildings by building the first pyramid built with stone as Saqqara. Teach them that without Africa, the world cannot be what it is today. And that what we have today in the world is African civilization. And education in the world today is African education. Therefore, the African man has done it first and the African man can do it always. Teach them that Africans have given the world world history. And that anybody saying that Africa has no history is a complete liar because the history of the world is the continuation of the history of Africa. Without Africa, there couldn't have been anything like history. Teach them that if the Asian or European or American has more IQ than the African currently, that the African man can develop and have more IQ than the Asian, the European or the American by reading books, studying very heavily, studying like bookworms, through proper dieting, through studying, through playing games that also enrich the mind. There are several ways to increase the IQ and that IQ is not permanent the way Europeans thought. An IQ can increase and Africans can become the most intelligent people in the world. Teach them that the African man is not in any way inferior to the European. Whatever the Europeans are achieving today is because they have developed their 
affected to men to believe in themselves. They even had to write some poems, like the one that Rudy had Kipling wrote, the white man's burden, and the white man had the burden to civilize the entire world. That is people whose affective domain was at his speak, speaking. They wrote different things that they believed that they were the best race in the world because they had worked on their psyche, their attitude to believe that they were the best. We Africans can be the best. We can civilize the world. We have done it first time and we can do it again. As an African man, I can be the best. As an African woman, I can be the best. The European is not better than me. The Asian is not better than me. And the American is not better than me in any way, in any form. My color, my skin color is not its advantage. It's an advantage for me. I can live anywhere in the world because the color of my skin helps me to shield me from the sun. Teach the African man, teach the African woman that Africa is not under any cause. But it is the colonizers, the invaders of Africa that have put their knees on our necks that have stopped us from rising. And the bad leadership which they modeled for us have put also its knee on our necks, not allowing us to rise. And that we are not under any cause. And once we break free from colonization and from bad leadership, we can rise again. Give the African man, give the African woman the African vision of rising again from last to first. That we Africans shall rise again from last to first. That the sky cannot even be our limit. And we can be the best in the world. Teach the African man, teach the African woman to believe in him or herself. That is the most important thing and the best thing that education can do for the African man and do for the African woman. When this knowledge sinks into the psyche, sinks into the heart, sinks into the African man and African woman, then the African man and the African woman will begin to innovate more than any other people. We begin to research more than the Chinese, more than the Americans. We begin to publish, to find patents in hundreds of thousands, in millions. The African man and woman will no longer depend on Europe to produce vaccines we use in Africa. We will no longer depend on Europeans to come to save us when there is any issue in Africa. Our leaders will no longer treat us as trash because they will not know that the people they are leading are valuable. Our leaders will no longer sell us out because they know that they themselves as leaders are valuable and that the African people are valuable. That is how to transform the African continent by changing what the African man believes that he or she is. Let the African man know that you as an African can be the best. You can be the best and better than the rest. And you can be the best among the best of the world. You can lead any organization. You can found the greatest organization in the world. You can do what no European has done. You can build what no European has built. built. You can be the best. You can be the best as an African. This is the best that education can do for the African man and set the African man free to become the best he or she can be. God bless Africa and God bless the continent and the whole people of Africa.